we find ourselves in St. Lucia. Um, we've been working our way up from Grenada um, and we're at the IGY Marina uh, at Rodney Bay. And there's some sentimental value here because this is where we landed when we came across on the Ark uh, in 2019. Um, but uh, it's been a good amount of time, I think, to do a review on the, on the, uh, on the Mabru low voltage air conditioning systems we installed. It's been three and a half months and so we're, uh, we're you know, pretty excited about the systems. They work great. So we're, I'm going to do a little bit about the install and then we'll do kind of a review at the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get to it. So what you doing, Wynn? I am working. I'm work doing a consulting gig for a company called Game Taco. They're a mobile gaming company and they've hired me as a part-time recruiter uh, for my consulting business and it's really awesome. I am having such a great time. Uh, the Game Taco team is amazing and uh, they let everyone work remotely so it doesn't matter that I'm here in the Caribbean sitting at a nav station getting my stuff done. It's kind of the, the thing that everybody wants to do, all the, all the cruisers, if they can find a gig of some sort, helps kind of pass the time and gives you some creative outlet and, um, and, and something to do with your time um, and feel like fulfilled. And Wendy certainly has been uh, in the zone as far as this goes. Uh, and um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's good if you can find a way to make some money while you're, while you're cruising. And <laughs> it keeps me out of Kevin's hair. Well, during these projects, for sure, I've had the entire boat torn apart, and it's still that way. Okay. Well, so here you can see our new air conditioning system. It's not, it's not uh, set up completely yet. This is the location of our old um, refrigeration compressors, and luckily we have water and in, uh, in, inlet and outlet water right here, ready to go um, from the from the refrigeration, and it'll just I'll, I'll put the I'll put Mabru's um, pump on it, and we should be good to go. So, this unit actually runs on is a 12 volt unit, so it's it's running on on on, on battery power. Now we're a 24 volt system, so I'm going to have to use a Victron 24 volt to 12 volt dropper, and the one that we'll go for this one here is a 40 the 40 amp version, uh, 22 amps at 12 volts. It should be. Uh, 11 amps at 24 and that's well that's that's what our autopilot draws it's what our refrigeration currently draws and so that should be beautiful if we can get that to work when we're off grid um, if we don't need to be on a, on a shore power to run our air conditioning it'll be wonderful and that's the plan that's why we have so much capacity for the batteries on board a cruising sailboat stowage is probably one of the most you know uh, important things and you know we have so much stuff around that needs to be stored none of this can be out it just has to be has to have a home we're constantly bumping up against that modern cruising sailboats have a lot of st of, of stowage um at the you know uh, because the because the customers ask for it and this boat has probably about the average amount but the more you cruise, the more you, you know, accumulate stuff, mostly spares and tools, because you just need all this stuff. And when you do need it, you really need it. So anyway, it's it's very hard to stay on top of stowage. And when you're adding two air conditioning units, um, that's that's a lot of stowage. That's that's needs to th those items need to find another home. So we're we're working on trying to figure out how to do all that. Get a new neighbor here. It looks like. Boy, do I hate doing this, but I'm going to have to cut this drawer in order to get this face off. It's it's not attached in a way that, I mean, it's got screws on the inside where, but I'm guaranteed that this face is glued on. So using some door shims, nice thing to have on board the boat if you ever need them um, and some toothpicks I have I have worked to try to get these panels glued back in what I'm doing down here is I'm, I'm, I'm just gluing these in lightly with with Sikaflex um, and once they're in place and held we're gonna um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use some more Sikaflex in various locations to make sure it doesn't go anywhere it sucks to lose this uh, this space, 
but um, for storage, but like I say, I'd much rather have air conditioning. So what'd you do today? I put the prop speed on the prop. Very exciting. Got to wire whisk it and then sand it and then put all sorts of chemicals on it. And now it's yellow and hopefully it's going to work. What are you doing, hon? I pulled out our old water refrigeration pump, which I thought I might be able to use somehow, but it's beaten old and uses 230 power so that's out of here and in place of that we're in the process of installing these little small brushless pumps um, which apparently are very energy efficient so as is usually the the, the situation I, I think it's worth talking a little bit about about uh, project management um, if i didn't buy and pack all the stuff that we used um, uh, to bring down I would be at the mercy of the local channelry for one thing and secondly they wouldn't have any of the stuff I need they just don't it's just it's just too specialized so this project of putting in uh, there's a bunch of projects going on but the three big ones are the new battery banks um, or the battery packs I should say uh, and then the two air conditioning units uh, both of which took an immense amount of sourcing I, I spent the entire off season four months doing nothing but buying stuff on on Amazon and, and, and checking off the list and everything else and making sure Amazon and eBay really I really like eBay um, is to my view preferable uh, they're just I, I just like the way it works better but that, either way um, they're you know however you want to do it you, you really have to buy these parts in advance uh, and then once you get started, you can't let anything demoralize you. You have to, if something doesn't fit or you don't have the part in it, and there have been, of course, especially plumbing fittings that I haven't, that I didn't have in stock um, and had to, and I knew that they would have them over at Budget Marine. So I, and then they have mostly have, and I'm short a couple pieces, but I think I can work around that. If you find that you're dead in the water on something, you just have to move to something else. You can't sit there and stew about it or, or cry or anything like that. You gotta, you got you gotta really get, you know, get moving on something else and get every last little thing. Um, that's the way you compress the timeline, is, is by getting any job that you imagine that, that needs to be done will take a certain amount of time. And whether you do it right now or in like a week, it's still going to be that same amount of time. The difference is if you sit around and mope about it um, or or get frustrated nothing gets done and time elapses with no progress and then if you do find that you're that you're missing something you have to get on the onto sourcing it because it's never going to be easy um if it's going to take three or four days to get some part like uh, like our our cooking of the batteries um damaged the digital shunts for cymarine um and they just you know melted and so i needed new ones and so i had to you know order them from on Amazon from Cymarine and then they go ahead and ship it from Slovenia which worked well enough I mean it, it arrived in Miami the following day um, with DHL but then DHL promptly um, lost it <laughs> so yeah, we, you, and you, you, so, so you have to factor in a little bit of human error along the way as well so those are kind of my, my initial thoughts on this I'll probably have more um, as the project goes on my first other initial thought would be it's now five minutes of seven in the morning I got up at 5 45 this morning getting on the projects early in the day is, is, is a critical thing as well because it gets so hot here later in the afternoon um, that it's better to move the entire work day forward and then uh, you know here the guy at the security gate gives me a hard time because it's Sunday and um, and the, the island is very religious and he's listening to you know mass on his on his radio and he's telling me that I shouldn't be working and I, 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 I just looked at him and said, I don't have a choice in the matter. Um, you, you know, God helps those who help themselves, I think, you know, and so you have to, I, I'll beg forgiveness on that one. I think it's just important to get this done. Um, and we just don't have any more days left. We're just so tight on time.
getting going on all these wiring runs and that's the hardest thing it's just you have to tear the boat absolutely completely apart and you know back here on this end we're kind of getting moving we've got all the hoses in place um all the all the hoses are ready the, the ducting i've got this one piece going to my splitter there's a big y splitter like this one um that uh will will we'll sec section the air off in two directions i'm going to put a return air vent right here on this wall hopefully it doesn't get bed sheets and stuff sucked into it but i don't have much option there you can see how how sweaty i am typical here in the caribbean but i'm losing weight <laughs> this uh, that's good what are you doing kevin <laughs> hot again um, I've got to get hosing all the way to both sides of here for the air conditioning for this air conditioning unit we're getting and air conditioning we're getting air conditioning yes wow and, that's um, pretty cool it's not easy that the native size is four inches which is this size hose here and I mean to get that through was just impossible there's no way um, so I had to neck it down to three inch and then so I have stuff for both sides for three inch. so I'm running as much I've got more of the hosing of the four inch than I do three, so I have to use as much of it as I can. But I think I'm just about there. Now it's just a matter of wiring it up. All of these connector pieces are just these the types of things you just can't find anywhere in the islands. You have to order all of it in the U.S. and bring it out, or it's gonna happen. Plus these hose clamps in the channelry are about, gosh, I don't even know how much they cost. They're crazy expensive. Uh, I got these on, I got the ones I'm using now, stainless steel hose clamps on Amazon for something like $12 for a pack of six. Uh, here they're probably 12 to $15 US each. I'm gonna just have to push down like that. It's me of a little bit proud up here, but you know, I mean, I honestly don't know what else to do. It just, uh, it's just a really, really tight space. Now, one of the other things we try to stock is literally everything we could possibly need. We have very deep supplies of, of you know, hardware store level supplies of zip ties and other things because there's nothing that slows a project down faster than having to run off to the channel re to get something stupid like that um, and you don't want to do it half-assed either and just you know stick a piece of wire around it or or something you really do want to try to do a minimally professional job just something for people who are doing the work like this long zip ties are much preferred to short zip ties they cost about the same and it's a lot easier to, to run them when they're lo extra long and then you just clip them off. You never want to leave zip ties unclipped. It just looks terrible. Um, so you, you, you basically use a long one and then clip it down to size. It's just, it, there's, trying to get little eight inch or four inch zip ties tied around pieces of wires. It's just terrible, it takes forever. And on another note, um, the purpose of this zip tie, the importance of this particular zip tie is very high uh, because we do not want any of this getting caught up in the qu quadrant which is that metal arced, arced piece of casting of metal um, that's our rudder quadrant and it swings back and forth and if it catches if these little cotter pins down here catch on the on the on the on the uh, hosing it's going to rip it um, and do damage and we just want to make sure we maintain proper clearance there it's kind of hard to see but we do have our unit grounded down there the way they ask for here you can see the ground wires going into our grounding plate um, and then um, these are actually both grounds for both air conditioning units plus with the rest of the boat night one put the bed back together and I'm being blasted by cold air out of this lovely tube oh I think I'm in love. Place is a disaster. We'll fix it up tomorrow.
so far and away the hardest part of these jobs um, the air conditioning and the batteries has been the running of wiring and hosing I would argue that hosing is actually harder but there's less of it um, but nonetheless the hoses have a tendency to be thick and, and difficult unwieldy to, to, to work with and it's uh, you, you know you, you, you want to make the thing serviceable and so you need extra wiring and things like that so that it's not so tight that you just can't you know move it without disassembling things far away this has been an unbelievable job um, in terms of, of, of reward and also of, of absolutely unbelievable amounts of work I, I have not worked this hard you know in my adult life I don't believe physically uh, on, on, on several projects at the same time so you know it's 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 been a big it's been a big one um, I'm sore everywhere and the job isn't done yet I've got a full day ahead of me to get the second air conditioning unit installed um, it took me all day to do the what I considered to be the easier of the two air conditioning units which was the one in the half cabin and I did get that done late yesterday afternoon uh, and we had air conditioning last night the, the room's a mess we don't have the return the, the supply air or the return air grills in place yet but uh, it's um it's on its way and it is functional and that's uh, that was a big milestone What's the girl thinking about everything? Well, the boy has forgotten that there is a non-working sink pump and he's gonna get to it when he gets to it but if he doesn't get to it today he's gonna be really unhappy <laughs> well I guess the order has been given to get the Cali gulper pump fixed and um, yeah we think that probably what happened with it was the toggle was left on and then when power came on it, it it was running but dry and it doesn't make a whole lot of noise if it's running dry and I think it ran for a while and then eventually damaged the diaphragm so but we have a rebuild kit here um, service kit so I'm gonna have to order another one of these as well so I have that in stock um, moving along with getting this in I, I, I'm getting close I've got uh, all the main wiring done um, this is an Orion um, Victron Orion dropper what it does is take 24 volt power and make it 12 volt power for the for the AC um, the AC was not available in a 24 volt um, version they they say they were thinking about it but the demand wasn't really there so they, they figured that you can do this is about a $50 solution to the problem um, and that's no then that's no big deal happy to have it Victron makes good stuff and then um, all I have to do right now is wire the pump. That's what I'm doing these little 16 gauge wires for. Um, the brushless pumps they sell, or that come with this rather, they're, they're included in the kit, are, um, are, are, are quite impressive. They run apparently 350 gallons an hour or something like that. So um, it's a uh, pretty good. Here's the unit in place. There's the control unit back there. I'm gonna screw it to that conduit um, that's a that's a chase that runs all the way down the boat it's a nice thing that oyster did allows you to run wiring to the length of the boat without too much trouble um, and I'm just gonna screw it right in there it's like I think they took a piece of PVC and cut it in half and then glass it in my bulbous head doesn't fit in that I know cavity but when he does <laughs> when he's got a small head are you trying to film me I'm killing myself Trying to take a measurement on where this cutter's coming out. One and three quarter inches. Okay. Holy schmoly. Kevin's drilled a hole in our boat. Oh my god, water's coming in. Oh my god, you're not funny. <laughs> yeah, just um sweating and cutting return air vents. Try not to cut things that don't supposed to get cut. Have a look. Well, so far so good. I wasn't able to cut all the way to the top like I wanted, I don't think. So I think this is gonna be it right here. Um, 
came out pretty good. We had Sonny, our painter, um, spray these uh, vents in his spray booth, so get a pretty good fit and finish there. Anytime that you're pulling tape off of a painted surface, whether it be the hull of the boat or something like this, you want to pull it straight back. If you don't do it that way, you risk having it pull the finish off the off the wood, and you don't want that. Um, it's it's a it's a painter's trick. It's something that's almost a lost art. I find people don't seem to ever do it this way. I used a combination of a Dremel tool with one of their quick release rotary blades and also a saber saw um, there we go that should do it the tape keeps the saw from marring the the finish there we go I think that's pretty good um, fair match to the to the finish as well and considering they kind of did it off-site without anything to go by. Oh, I've obviously been using this Dremel tool with this angle attachment and um, these, these abrasive blades, the new ones they have, the quick release ones are truly awesome and really work well. It's kind of a beast. If I if I was going to use this, if I was going to improve the kit, I would get another battery because um, I did go through batteries fast. Here you can see I've largely cut through um, this area. It's it's you know it's not the ideal method, but it's also the only method, uh, and it and it really does work. And just like that, there it is. I do need to cut that white board down a little bit. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver and butch it all up. I don't have any other, I'm just done with, with playing around with power tools and getting, I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good as they say. Okay, well I think that'll work. Um, pretty close on, on it. I, I do wanna, there's a, there's a little plastic trim piece underneath it sit, making it sit a little high, but I don't know how hard I wanna work to get that fixed. Um, all I really have to do is tilt it down in the front and that's all it would need, but we'll see about that. Otherwise it looks great. For the temperature control unit, um, the kind of thermostat as it were, in the boat, there's not a lot of great locations and this is typical of, of, of what you get in a boat, which is that the, what is on the backside is oftentimes in the way of, of a location that you would like. You really have to mask everything off, figure out where your opening is going to be, and you get one shot at doing it right. Okay, so we got the we got this uh, little thermostatic display um, set up and running, and it looks like everything's good. It's gone, it's reduced the temperature in the room by three degrees in the last 15 minutes, so it's definitely working. And it it's a it's a nice dehumidifier as well. Now I've got air conditioning coming out of the vents. Um, we really had some limitations on where we could put the vents uh, because of just <laughs> stuff that's in the way, like the battery charger. Uh, but the unit is here and, and operational and running well, and so everything is everything is good. Very happy with it so far. Tip that down a little bit, just to get a little chillier. After three and a half months of use, I would say that the Mabru uh, low voltage, 12 volt um, air conditioning units are a fantastic success. Uh, the, they've worked flawlessly. The things are quiet. They don't make any noise. Um, they're, they're, they're amazing. And as far as power consumption goes, I think they start off at about 30 amps. But when you turn both of them on, they, they draw about 30 amps. And then they, once the place is cooled down, they, they, um, they lower the voltage consumption as needed and um, they're definitely designed to use as little power as they can. Uh, it does not feel undersized at all. They, they, they completely uh, you, you know, deliver on the promise, promises. So we can use the, you know, what we typically do at Anchor is we'll, we'll turn the aft unit on kind of when we're getting ready to go to bed and then, I don't know, if I get up at four o'clock in the morning or something, it feels cool inside the, the room, then I just shut it off. 
um, and then uh, we do the same the following day. It's uh, it's probably not unless we can get power within a few days. I would say I wouldn't want to run both of them, um, you know, off grid. Uh, just kind of you know t takes too much out of the batteries. But but um, but the batteries are incredible as well. I mean, we can go seven. 10 days without um, without charging as long as we're not using the air conditioning with that but that covers our uh, refrigeration um, and um, all the lighting and fans and if we were sailing we um, were using our instruments and in autopilot um, so everything is really really working well very happy with the way the systems are performing so that's the that's the review and um, oh and by the way we didn't we didn't get these units for free from Mabru. Um, a lot of influencers get, you know, get, uh, get 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 stuff given to them. Um, we did pay the full price, and they're not cheap. Um, although they did give us free shipping. I think if we were a regular customer and we pushed hard enough, they would have done that for them too. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, very very happy with Mabru and their um, and their product quality.